Ah! There's that. They don't bleed because they are undead. Ooh. Doing this would work. It'll kill it. I better get Kai power for it. I do. Phew. Just a shame I had to use up eight daggers. Oh, never mind. There we go. I took no damage. I don't think. I don't believe I did take damage from anything in there. I should have. I think. Well, seeing as the Vordak dodged my attack but didn't hit me back, that was a first occurrence. I don't know why that happened, but it did, and I'm not going to complain about it. Garnet Pendant, Finest Throwing Knife, Superior Crossbow Bolts, and Loam Spur Oil. And Finest Lever. You step away from the bodies of your slain enemies and wipe the battle sweat from your... I thought you said bow. Like, I didn't use a bow. From your brow. The Vordek is dissolving into a bubbling pool of corruption on the floor nearby. You take care not to go near its fetid remains. You are surprised to find another Shianti cube here in this chamber. Although its presence is not entirely exceptional. You recall that Seratar possessed one just like it, and there were others that you encountered in the sunken forest deep down in the old hot spring mine. As you approach to examine the cube, it begins to hum and vibrate. Moments later, your own cube starts to vibrate in sympathy. You are not expecting this. Both cubes will explode if you do not act quickly. Oh, great. Six cents, obviously. Grab the cube. Yeah, okay. No time to ponder, you trust your six cents. Instinctively, you snatch up the new cube and hurl it at a window set high in the wall of this hall. It sails through the opening and falls to the base of the tower below. Moments later, you hear a dull boom when it explodes harmlessly outside. You have avoided being torn apart by the unstable cube. With your enemies slain and the cube no longer a deadly threat, you are able to examine the shanty chest in, rel in relative safe safety. You possess the means to open this sealed container, but do you wish to do so? Time is pressing and your mission is urgent. Perhaps it would be best to ignore the chest and press on what you can. The choice is yours to make. Why would I do that? Didn't do it before. Won't do it now. You remove the cube from your backpack and use it to open the lock. Hell yes. Although I hate these puzzles because I'm not good at them. Like, I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. Oh no. How in the bloody fuck am I going to do this one? I'd assume by doing this. Like, there's that part. Hooray! Now I just have to... Uh... Now I just have to have something move downwards. Nope. Does that move it? Oh wait. No, that doesn't work. Well that? No. I don't know. Return that to normal and use this. Move those two. Oh really? You don't touch that. I thought you used the... Oh. So you just do... No. You just do that. And then you do that. And then it's like... Whoosh. Wait. How is it laid out? <laughs> I don't remember. Um. Wait, so it's like that. It would help if it wasn't such a pain in the ass to control. Huh? Oh, wait. It's not that way either. Oh, fuck. How do you do it? Push that one out, push that one out. And there you go. Push it out. Oh! There we go. God. It's because I've moved it the wrong way. Even when I look at the sixth sense thing, I still get it wrong. <laughs> and whenever it starts to vibrate, that just makes things worse. Because it's like, I'm gonna die! <laughs> Your wits enable you to succeed where the clumsy Giyak and its cowardly masters failed. Carefully, you lift the heavy lid of the shanty chest and peer inside. Fortunately, it contains something that may prove to be very useful on the mission ahead. Yay! Oh, nice! A shield! A war guard! 
Is that actually better than my current? Mindful of time's swift passing, you make a swift check of your weapons and equipment before you search for an exit from this hall. You ascend a chiseled stone staircase that leads to the second floor of this dark fortress tower. A wide corridor leads away from the top of the steps into the gloom beyond. Dimly lit by sputtering braziers, as wearily you advanced, you encounter no resistance and you know in your heart that this cannot be good. As bad as your feeling about this place may be, you proceed onwards. When a black silhouette emerges in the distance, a tingle of apprehension runs down your spine. The seemingly empty chamber harbors deadly dangers after all. The silhouette is that of an imposing dra Dracarim warrior clad in heavy armor, and wielding two great swords, one in each gauntleted hand. A strange amulet dangles from a chain around his neck. You have never met him before, but there is no doubt about his identity. This is Warlord Gunzar. He has been waiting impatiently for you to arrive. Rantek Jack. Orkat Echo Lozen Akiamez What took you so long, Lone Wolf? He growls in Giyak. Ran Okak Tuzmog Ok Ez Dandon Echo You have tested my patience. He utters a chilling laugh filled with hatred and disdain. Then he whistles a shrill note and, an, and immediately a pack of doom wolves appears from the darkness behind him. Ah, oh, fuck. Hi, friend. Oh god, they are massive swords. He whistles again and the fearsome beasts come loping towards you with their slavering fan-filled jaws wide open. They are hungry for the kill. Oh. Make my choice. Oh. Wait, weapon skill. You rely on the kite to confront both guns and the Doom Wolves. Concentrate on the feral minds of the Doom Wolves and lock a powerful blast weapon skill so I don't have to waste stamina? Sure. Oh fuck, my Kai. Confident of your prowess in battle, you raise your weapon and take the f the fight to the advancing enemy. The speed and dexterity of your counter-attack wins the initiative, and you are able to get the first strikes on both Gunzar and his snarling doom wolves. You wound them, but in so do in doing in so doing, you leave yourself vulnerable to their frenzied retaliation. Shit. I am also running low on Kai, so I don't think I'll be able to do the the one that'll burn them, which is the kind of kind of the one I need to do. Shit. So we're fighting Gunzar. That was unexpected. Maybe this is split into chapters after all. Oh god. Oh. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, I have to wait. Oh no. What? Oh, they're all bleeding. Shit, what should I do? I'm tempted on using a potion. I'm gonna. Ding! That's just enough. Oh no 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 no. No. Not two at once. Fucking douchebags. Whatever. This is what I wanted to do. Christ. I have got no Kai left though. Oh no! Woohoo! Now I got it all back. That's good. Is that a laugh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Not doing so bad, I suppose. He's burnt as well, so he's gonna be hurting pretty badly. Booyah! Cool. Should I hit him once more for good measure? <laughs> I guess. He's just taking a beating. Uh, just to be nice. Oh, now he's dead. I'm bleeding too. Shit. What? Oh. What's happening? What the fuck? <gasps> Wait, what? Okay. That wasn't the end of the fight. Well, it was, but it seemed to end in such a weird way. Oh! That's what he was wearing an amulet. I forgot. The Doom Wars have been slain, yet Gunzar, although defeated, remains upright and boldly defiant. He snatches the amulet from around his armored throat and points it towards you. In broken, some lending, he spits out a rebuke filled with spite and retribution. 
You may think you have learned the secrets of the Shianti Temple, but such hollow vanity will serve to seal your doom. Not even your accursed Sunblade can save you now. And with these words ringing in your ears, he unleashes a blistering blast of energy that leaps from the magical amulet and hits you squarely in the chest. Winded by the tremendous force of the impact, you stagger backwards and lose your grip on the hilt. At the Somers word, your divine blade tumbles through the air, blade over tip, and hits the granite floor point first. With a screech of sundered stone, it embeds itself upright in the center of a marbled flagstone. Ha! Huh, exclaims Gunzar triumphantly. The power of darkness extinguishes the power of light. Thus shall it be forever so. That can't be the, like, a death. Oh no, that's the end of the chapter. Oh! Dex. There we go. You get three, you get three points every, every chapter. Yeah. Oh well. Wow. So it is split into different chapters. Dawn of Avatar, chapter two. Oh no, it's three chapters per, not four. Yeah. Three chapters per act. I guess I could be split into it. I don't think it would, but could be. You tumble through. Whoa, I'm all the way down here. Lone Wolf Cell. <gasps> Ooh. Anyway, you tumble through darkness, unending, a spiraling descent into a chilling void. Grey shadows swirl and engulf you as you plummet. Ghostly images without resolve, whispering in voices you cannot fathom. Is this sleep? Are you dreaming? Is this death? After a seemingly endless fall, abruptly you are jarred awake. It is a violent rousing that shakes you to the core and leaves you feeling dizzy, aching, and nauseous. When at last you get your bearings, you are... Insen... Insensate? On your knees and staring wide-eyed into the impenetrable darkness. You cannot see yourself or your surroundings. The air is icy cold and stale. The only sounds is that of your laboring breathing. Labored breathing, echoing in the dark. You try... <gasps> oh no! You try and reach for the summer sword, but the sheath on your back is empty. Then you see a dim light radiating in the black mist just a few feet away. It is your sacred blade plunged into the ground. You sigh with relief as you retrieve it, but you cannot remember how you came to lose it in the first place. Shapes begin to appear as if ashen light was slowly returning to the world. Uh, everything is cast in deep shadow, but this place is so familiar you recognize it at once. You've awoken in the courtyard of the Kai Monastery. Somehow, be it in dream or dark magic, you have fallen through oblivion and found your way home, but this place feels nothing at all like home. There is no comfort here, no warmth, the air hangs heavy and cold, and the ground is scattered with the blackened ashes of the, your betrayed order. The, ruins, the ruined walls bring back memories of death and destruction, only now you remain beneath the starless black sky. Try as you might to rebuild this place and restore the Kai, it lays bare your darkest dread. This place is a shrine to the chilling fear that you will always be alone. Lone Wolf. You are so enmeshed in your past, it's in everything you have lost that you do not realize the words have been spoken aloud. At first, you think you've, you think perhaps you said them yourself, a subconscious admission that you are truly a name, that you truly are your namesake. It's only when you hear your name again, this time closer, that you look up to see the one who has spoken it. Leandra? Lone Wolf. The figure before you is, a, is but a silhouette, a moving shadow shrouded in blackness. He is dressed like you, shaped like you, and his voice is a whisper that sounds like yours would do if all humanity were drained from it. It's not Leandra. Wait, what? Hi? I'm confused. That picture made no sense to me. It resembles how you feel, lost in the darkness, the emptiness, the cold, a soul-numbing tide of anguish and loneliness washes over you at the sight of the figure, f threatening to drown what little remains of your light. Reaching to its side, the silhouette draws its weapon and levels it at you. It says nothing, no words are needed. As it raises its arms to strike a killing blow, a single, a simple truth becomes crystal clear. You must rise up and fight for your life or be slain by your own nightmare. What? I'm fighting myself. Oh. That'll work. You call forth your healing powers to heal your mind to put an end to this nightmare. Boom. You are trapped inside a nightmare. This thing is your fear and loneliness made manifest in your mind. 
Fighting it may just be as fruitless as fighting yourself, there has to be another way. You take a moment to clear your head, letting your Kai powers through, fl flow through you in a healing, energizing rush. Although you had hoped to stir yourself awake, your sleep is too deep to break, to break it this way.